According to the Society of Actuaries website, 13% of their members work in jobs that are not insurance related. The Casualty Actuarial Society website, they say that 10% of their members are not working in insurance related positions. So my question for you is, did you know that so many actuaries are working in positions that are not insurance related? That's what today's video is all about. I'm going to be sharing with you seven seven <laughs> seven areas where actuaries can work that are not insurance related in the actuarial field these are known as non-traditional actuarial roles because you're not doing and dealing with the regular insurance stuff so not only have i caught together seven different areas that you could work in in the future but i've also found current job postings so you can learn a little bit more about what these actuaries do day to day and i will be sharing those with you too I'm Bria, an associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community. So if you are ready to get into this, give me a big thumbs up and we will get started right now. I'm waiting for that thumbs up. Okay, let's go. So the first area that actuaries work in is population health. Now in population health, what actuaries will usually be doing is calculating KPIs or key performance indicators to compare and evaluate the overall health of a population. So it could be the population of a city, a state or province, or even a country. But basically by calculating KPIs, they'll be able to determine how healthy that population is and then compare it to other populations, but they'll also be able to work on ways to improve the health of that population. So one potential KPI could be maybe the number of illness related deaths per 1000 deaths. Now this would be a really good way to measure overall population health because it would give us a sense of what percentage of people are dying due to illness. And the lower that number is, generally the better the population health would be. And I just kind of made that one up. I don't actually know if that's one that they would use or not, but it's just an example. So this would give us a way to compare different populations, but it would also allow us to improve that KPI over time. So for example, maybe actuaries could decide that implementing free stress management classes to the population would help reduce the stress in the population's health and in turn it would improve their immune system and because of the improved immune system it would reduce the number of illness related deaths. So that's population health. Let's look at the job description that I found for you. So the key roles of this position would be to calculate KPIs and other metrics in order to measure and quantify Jefferson's population health. So that's what all this job would be about is calculating those KPIs, collecting tons of data in order to figure out what those KPIs are and then finding ways to improve them. The next area that actuaries work in is marketing. Now for me, this is probably one that I would find extremely interesting, but I never got the opportunity to go into it. So in marketing, there is tons and tons and tons of data about potential customers and just the market overall. So with all that data, actuaries are able to make certain insights into maybe the types of people that would be interested in buying their products and services. And they'd also be able to determine unique selling features of the products that they are offering. Typically in insurance, the products are commodity products, meaning that a lot of companies offer exactly the same product, so it's really hard to compare and contrast them. Usually when products are commodity products, it means that companies will just compete on price. So if one company has this product A and another company has this product B and they're very, very similar, then one company will lower the price to attract buyers to their product. And then in turn, this one will react by reducing the price of theirs and it will just keep lowering and lowering the price because there's really nothing to differentiate the two products other than price. Okay, let's look in the job description for this one. So this job is for a senior account executive and marketing actuary. And if we go further down the job description here, you're going to see that their key roles are to contribute to the marketing and pricing strategy. They're going to be writing articles and those articles might be used to attract different buyers to the website and help them understand the insurance products that they're buying. They're also responsible for maintaining good relationships and they're also going to be actively involved in corporate events and publications. So these actuaries are really getting out in the world and getting exposure to the public and their potential clients so that they can gather data and get a better sense of who they're really selling to. 
Okay, next is financial planning. This is number three. So every business wants to be able to know what they can expect in terms of income. Oh, there's my cat. <laughs> They want to know what you can expect in terms of income, cost, maybe profit and capital in the future. And if they know what they can expect in the future, they're going to be able to make better strategic and informed decisions on how they could change the direction of the company or implement new ideas, that kind of thing into the company. But in order to do that kind of thing, they need actuaries or someone at least to predict what their income and all the costs and everything is going to look like in the future so that they really are informed and along with that these type of actuaries may be able to take in different scenarios and compare them so if the company decides that we want to go either direction a b or c an actuary may be able to determine what the financial future would look like under each of those scenarios an actuary does this using financial models and prediction models in order to foresee what the future of the company looks like financially in two five maybe even ten years from now. Let's look at the job description for this one. So this job here is for an actuarial analyst, enterprise, financial planning, and accounting. So if we go down here to the position overview, we're going to see that this person is going to be involved in a lot of strategic initiatives. They're going to be working with financial forecast models and dashboards, and they're going to be looking at capital budgeting and capital allocation management. So this person is going to be involved a lot in the financials of the company and it's part of their job to understand what the future of the company looks like financially as well. Okay, the fourth area that you may be able to go in as an aspiring actuary is risk management. And this is another one that sounds really interesting to me. So basically every single company in the world has some sort of risk. For insurance companies, the risk is a bit more obvious, but for other companies, there is risk too. And when I say risk, basically that means that there is potential for unforeseen events that happen in the future at various times that we don't exactly know when, but those events will probably cause a significant financial impact to the company. So for example, insurance companies make sense because if they have one of their policyholders die in the future, then they have to pay out a large sum of money, for example, in a life insurance company. That's obvious, that's insurance risk, but there are other risks. For example, if you think about the potential for maybe, let's say, bad publicity, any company could get word out and get bad reviews, and maybe they have some huge story written up about them in the news that really really opens the public's eyes up to some of the bad labor practices they have in their company. If something like that gets out into the public, then a lot of people are going to choose to no longer purchase from that company. And because of that, it's going to significantly reduce the income of that company and have a huge financial impact. And because things like that exist, there's always risk for every single company. And there are so many other types of risk out there that you may not even think about right now, but trust me, every single company has risk. and actuaries are pros, professionals at analyzing risk, mitigating risk, and that's why actuaries make great people to have in terms of risk management. So let's look at the job description for this one. So this position is looking for a senior actuarial analyst associate risk management property and casualty. So basically someone to work in the risk management department of the PNC department. For this one, they're going to be working on implementing and monitoring the enterprise risk framework for the PNC segment of Munich, a reinsurance company. So this one is going to be a really interesting job. There are a lot more details. They're going to be working with IFRS, which involves accounting standards. They're going to be doing analysis and so much more. Okay, we're gonna keep going, but if you have liked what you've heard so far, could you give this video a thumbs up and let me know? Okay, let's go on to number five. This is actuaries working in IT, the information technology field. Now, computer programming and all that stuff is really complex. You know that, right? And actuarial stuff is really complex too. So when you can find someone that has a really good understanding of actuarial stuff and IT stuff, then that person is extremely valuable to insurance companies. Now, these types of people might be involved with keeping actuarial software and databases up to date. They might have to make adjustments to the website and terms of the actuarial stuff that needs to be on a website. They might even be responsible for training employees on all the technical actuarial stuff. So these types of people are rare because they're two very specialized areas. And when they come together into one, it's kind of 
it's pretty awesome for an insurance company to find someone like that. I actually worked with someone recently in the actuary accelerator community that ended up getting an entry level position teaching Python to actuaries. So that's just one example of an IT actuarial position. Let's look at the job posting for this one. Okay, in this position, they're looking for an actuarial programmer. So if we scroll down here and get a sense of what the job responsibilities are, we see that this person is responsible for assisting in the development and maintenance of analytical tools and models. They are going to be assisting in training other staff and they'll also be assisting in the development of models to support business. See, for some of you, especially early on in your actuarial career, you may not even 100% understand what all this means. And that's why it's so specialized because right now as an aspiring actuary, you probably haven't had a lot of exposure to all the IT models and everything like that. If you get into an IT role, you're going to get so much exposure. And I would guess that these people are some of the highest paid actuaries because their knowledge is so specialized. Although I don't really know that for 100% sure. It's just a guess. Okay, next is actuaries working in education and teaching positions. So there are tons of actuarial schools all over the world teaching actuarial science to aspiring actuaries. So they need fully qualified actuaries to teach those courses. There are also tons of study materials that are available taught by actuaries. So in general, it's really best if you can have someone that has experience in the field because those people tend to really understand and know what aspiring actuaries are going through. Another example is like me doing these videos. I would consider myself an actuarial educator because I create tons of videos to help you all achieve success in the actuarial field. I've created the Actuary Accelerator community to help you become in-demand actuarial candidates. So I am in a similar situation as this, and this is the one that I would consider myself doing. And actually on the Society of Actuaries website, they say that 1% of their members are in the educational field. Okay, now let's look at a job posting for this type of a position. So in this position, they're looking for a visiting faculty member. They'll be working in statistics, applied probability, actuarial science, data science, and financial mathematics. And there isn't a whole lot of descriptive information given in this job posting, but what they do say is that this faculty member will be teaching five different courses throughout the year. And I assume those courses will be related to these topics here at the top. So I do have to say though, it was kind of hard to find one of these teaching positions. I imagine that these ones aren't posted very often. Okay, the seventh non-traditional actuarial role is senior executive level management. So this is things like the CEO of a company, the CFO, maybe the COO. There are so many different leadership opportunities in actuarial work. So these usually are the highest paid. These are the people making 300, 400, maybe even $500,000 a year because their knowledge and expertise is so specialized. Usually these actuaries have tons of experience moving up in companies. They've done a lot of actuarial work in their career and now they've also become business experts. So they're really able to take control of the entire company, lead the company, make strategic decisions. And that kind of insight is very important for them. So a lot of the time you will see that the leadership teams of insurance companies especially are filled with many actuaries. And that doesn't mean that actuaries can't work for other companies too. They absolutely can. But typically non-insurance companies aren't specifically going to be looking for an actuary to take on a senior executive role. Now there wasn't a job posting for one of these that I could find, but I am going to head to the Sun Life website. Sun Life is a large insurance company here in Canada and on their website, they've stated their leadership team. Now many of these leaders have actuarial science backgrounds and they are actuaries. So let's take a look at them really quickly. So here's Sun Life's leadership page. If I scroll down and open this for Jacques and this for Robert, and this for Vineet, then in their summaries of each of them, there is at the bottom information on their degree. So this president of Sun Life got a Bachelor of Science in Actuarial Science. He's also a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. Robert is the president and chief executive officer. 
If we go to the bottom here, he holds a bachelor degree in actuarial science and is also a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and the CIA. And then the vice president of insurance solutions, the senior vice president of insurance solutions, also has a bachelor's degree in actuarial science and he is a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and the CIA as well. So as you can see, tons of members of this specific leadership team, and there may be more than I showed, are actuaries. And that is so common in insurance companies. And like I said, actuaries can also be extremely beneficial in non-insurance company management teams as well. Okay, next we're going to talk about some of the non-typical companies that actuaries work in, but they're doing typical traditional actuarial work. But before that, I'm going to list right here all seven of those different non-traditional fields that we talked about. And let me know down in the comments, which one would you most prefer to work in? I would love to get to know all of you a little bit better. And by letting me know that, I will get a sense of what you guys are really interested in. And perhaps in the future, I will do a more specialized video on that specific topic. Now, if you read the title of this video, it said that Uber hires actuaries. So that is one company that I didn't even realize was hiring actuaries, but it makes sense because I guess they've recently decided to expand their offerings. They're now offering insurance to Uber drivers so that they feel safe. They get protection directly through the company that they're working for in terms of their auto insurance. So this allows them to expand their product offering. It gives them increased profitability and it allows them to really support their Uber drivers. So the work that someone will be doing in a typical PNC property and casual auto insurance company is probably very similar to what someone will be doing in an Uber actuarial job. The only differences I can really think of is that the types of drivers that they are insuring are going to be a little bit different and just their behaviors in general. So for Uber drivers, they're going to be generally driving fairly short distances. They're probably overall safer drivers because Uber is using tracking devices and GPSs to monitor how fast they're going and also they're driving with clients so when you're driving someone as a client you're probably going to drive a bit safer also the quality of driver overall is probably higher with uber drivers than it is for the general public because there are certain qualifications that someone needs to meet in order to be a driver for uber and the second company that hires actuaries is a company that rhymes with oogle and yes if you guess google you are right good job I actually read an interview with Frank Chang, who was the prior chief actuary at Google. And he has, at least at the time of that article, he had gone on and now started working for Uber. So he used to be the chief actuary at Google. And what he states his job involved was working on Google's corporate risk. He was involved with the credit cards. He was involved with warranties. And he even did some insurance related research on self-driving cars. So I'm not sure what else Google has going on in the actuarial field, but that just gives you a little bit of a sense of what they might be doing. However, I have heard that the actuarial jobs at Google are very limited, so don't get your hopes up for getting one of those positions anytime soon. However, nothing is impossible, so if that's what you want to do, go for it. Just my advice for you would be to start with the entry-level jobs that are more common in traditional areas and then work your way to Google. Okay, so that was seven non-traditional actuarial jobs and two unexpected companies companies that are hiring actuaries. But if you want to find out and learn a little more about what actuaries do in traditional actuarial roles, then there are two videos that you have to watch. One is about what I did in my actuarial internship roles. All my internships were in traditional actuarial positions, so that will definitely be insightful for you. And also in the past, I've done a day in the life video for my valuation actuarial role in a life insurance company. So I will link to those up above and down below in in the description and before you go watch those if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet you need to do that I recently learned that 75% of the people watching my videos are not even subscribed to the channel so what are you waiting for we give tons of actuarial tips and advice and insights like this so if you want more of that and to make sure you don't miss other videos make sure you subscribe we are on our way to 10,000 subscribers and I hope you will be one of them okay bye for now